ceiling. We have staff in a room talking about the debt ceiling. I don't know what he calls that, but everybody else would call it negotiating. Look, if we if if we were sitting in the room that we were today and it was February, I'd feel good about it. We just had our secretary say June first we could run out of money. We only have so many days left. The president decided to wait a hundred days before he would negotiate. He treated this the same way he treated the border. He wanted to ignore the problem. When I became speaker, one of the first things I requested is a meeting with the president. And I only got the meeting on February 1st. And I wanted to sit down with him to talk about how could we solve the debt ceiling problem, curve the way we've been spending money, find places we can save for the taxpayers. I mean, who would think if you COVID money that sat there for two years, that you passed the bill that the pandemic is over, that you could pull that money back with savings? What about growing our economy instead of watching our energy bills go up and the stock market go down? What about having the stock market go up where retirement accounts go higher, where you have more money in your pocket because your energy costs are less? What about the idea of helping people get back into the workforce because the supply chain will be better, the work requirements, helping people work? All of that I felt would be very positive. I talked to the president about it back then. He wanted to ignore us. And the only body in all of Congress were the Republicans who raised the debt ceiling. And we did it way in advance before Janet Yellen told us when the deadline was, because we didn't want to be here. So no, I don't think we're in a good place. I know we're not. This ignoring the problem, thinking it's going to go away, he could bumble his way just into a default like he did on the, on the, on the on border. That's what we didn't want to have happen. So we raised the debt limit. We're protecting. I don't know, maybe his secret plan is to wait till the last minute and pass our bill. I'm okay with that. They would have to get serious about negotiating. They would have to really talk about where they're going to go. Look, the way the founders des designed this whole government, the House takes an action, the Senate takes an action, you go to conference, the President decides he's going to sign it. Unfortunately, only one House has taken action. But it seems to be a continual pattern. When D.C. wanted to decri decriminalize all the actions, the House took an action, the President said he'd veto it, 170-some Democrats voted against it, and then it passed the Senate against Schumer's beliefs, and the President signed it. When we had a border with Title 42 going to be lifted, they ignored the problem, the House again took action. We are looking for solutions, but we'd really like somebody to work with us instead of against us. Yes, sir. Yes. Look, I think the President, I told him early on, if he finds some other policies that we can put in, to make the country safer, make it stronger, I'm more than willing to talk about that. I'm just not sure in the Senate, they haven't passed anything, but I, I can't say that. They did name March, Maine Maple Syrup Month. So if Schumer needs to put that into, I'll look the other way. Yes. Look, if you look at, we all know, how this works. When um, President Trump was in office and Nancy Pelosi would not pass a clean debt ceiling, when she said their party would not do it, he assigned Mnuchin and then they negotiated. Um, same thing with President Bush, same thing with Obama. Uh, unfortunately, here is the way the president has ignored it for a hundred days and then he still hasn't taken it serious. We only have so many days left in the session to deal with this. You know, I haven't hit from that. That's been from the very first day. When I went to meet with the president, it was the president and I. If the president comes to an agreement, the Democrats in the Senate will vote for it. The House will pass it if we are all in agreement. Why do we waste more time going around and around um, not, not solving any of the real problems. 
I think you're putting the company, the country in jeopardy when you do that. Yes, ma'am. Look, I think an American president should focus on the solutions of America. And I think it shows your values and your priorities. I just watched a border where we didn't focus upon. I watched a debt ceiling come before us that is very serious. I watched this president when he was senator vote against debt ceilings. Um, and he said, he said it didn't go far enough to cut and save. My question to the president is, how big a debt is too big? is $32 trillion if that's not big enough. That's bigger than our entire economy. And this whole time he wouldn't talk to me for 100 days, you know what happened? If you look at the Congressional Budget Office, our debt went up $100 billion more. How much more do you want to charge every new child born in America? Is 100,000 enough? How much do you want to indebt the next generation? Because he wants to spend more money we spent during the pandemic. He looks at the next 10 years, we will pay $10.5 trillion in interest. But historically, since 1940 until today, those 83 years, we only paid $9 trillion. He wants to continue to spend the next generation's money. So the real question is, what will he prioritize? What are his values? And how much is too much? You know, what was interesting, I've been through a lot of hearings as members of Congress, and I remember years ago, the Joint Chief came to a hearing and they asked him, what is the greatest threat to our nation? He didn't say Russia. He didn't say China. You know what he said? Our debt. Every great society has collapsed when they've overextended themselves. And can you seriously look, and I asked the president this, can you tell me, do you not believe there's not one thing in all the spending that we spend that we can't save? How long has he argued with me that money that has sat there for more than two years, that the pandemic is over, that we can't bring it back to the taxpayer? You know, everybody else is back to work. In the House, we passed the bill to have the federal employees to come back to work. 